Good morning and welcome to Christ Church for our service of morning prayer on this third Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our worship continues on page 80 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. We say together the Christ our Passover, found on page 83 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our psalm appointed for this day is a portion of Psalm 116 and can be found on page 759 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will read verses 10 through 17 together in unison. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant the child of your handmaiden, you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord.
reading from Luke. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He, he asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he, he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared! Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he entered in interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with him, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, Lord has risen indeed. And he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Two men are on their way home from Jerusalem after a gruesome Friday and a Sabbath of oppressive silence. The worst thing that could happen, happened. They're walking to Emmaus now, talking about it all and trying to make sense of the inconceivable. The man Jesus, the man they had followed for months, the man who had showed them more clearly than any rabbi they had known, what it might look like to be God's person in this crazy world. That man had been brutally executed. Jesus was dead. And what were they to do with their lives now? Lives that had once been so full and useful. Who were they to be now when Jesus had shown them who they might be? And we might be asking ourselves the same questions all these years later, for life has surely changed for us as for people everywhere. Who are we to be now when schools are closed, stores are shuttered, when working means not going into work, when what we have always done to define ourselves no longer applies? Who are we to be now when even friends are kept at a distance, when children and grandchildren must stay away, when the affection we so long to share is now a dangerous thing? We know something about these two men because we are them and they are us endlessly discussing what has happened, 
clinging to every bit of news for some kind of hope, longing for life to be something other than this. So two men are making their way to Emmaus from Jerusalem late on that first Easter Sunday. Though like this year, they weren't there to see Easter happen either. They are making their way out of the city that had brought both joy and grief over the last week. And another man joins them, asking what they have been talking about. The two men tell him about Jesus. And as though his death wasn't enough to bear, just today, some foolish women said he was alive again. Well, that can't be. Death is final, as everyone knows. So they give their grief a voice as they walk, though voicing it doesn't make it any better. We had hoped, they said, that he was the one to redeem Israel recounting all that had happened. As we had hoped for our child's graduation and seeing friends and a glorious Easter service and a vacation trip and a birthday party and on and on, we too had hoped. But then death intervened. And so we are now on our own road to Emmaus like them asking questions that have no good answers. But the man walking with them reminds them of ancient words of scripture, scripture foretelling what would happen. He puts their grief in a larger context, part of an ancient and ongoing story of who they are and who God is for them. And he must have said something that struck a chord because they asked him to stay with them, to stay and have dinner. And when he took the bread and broke it and gave it to them, suddenly they recognized the one who had been with them all along. They had been so consumed by what had been that they couldn't see what now was. But in that act of blessing, they saw once more the source of all their joy, the one who had promised he would never leave them, the one on whom all their hope was founded. And in that moment, their grief turned to joy. And I wonder if we don't usually gloss over this story, if maybe we think of the road to Emmaus as an interesting vignette instead of what it really is. Because this story of that walk away from death is also our story the story of our walk away from the shadow of death into Easter life, always accompanied by the one who is ever faithful, ever bringing new life out of the worst that the world can do. Like those two men on the road, heads down, consumed with sadness, we too tend to soldier on, heads down, when, if we would only look up, we would see God acting all around us. We might see him walking beside a weary nurse or an exhausted mom. We might see him walking beside a frightened child or a lonely nursing home resident. We might see him bringing food to the hungry or music to the saddened. We might see him and not recognize him, but he is there in every act of compassion and healing, in every kindness offered and every burden eased. Because the truth is, regardless of how this present moment feels, God is here and always will be. We have only to look up to see that he walks the road beside us every step of the way. And in sharing himself with us, he only asks that we do, as he has always done. So I wonder, in the days to come, who will we be for this sick and worried world? We say together the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For the sick and those in need, especially all the people in the United States and around the world who are sick and suffering. For health care workers, for all frontline workers, as well as those who have lost their jobs and those who are experiencing anxiety, stress, or grief because of COVID-19. We pray also for Bill and Barbara, for the victims of gun violence in Canada, for the victims of severe weather, for those on our prayer list and those on our hearts. I bid your prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this month. And we pray for those who have died, for those who love them, and for the comfort of their families. For Ellen, Michael, Jeff, Bailock, Derek, Schlotman, Gary, Simpson, Leslie L. Wilkes, Jr., Sam P. Inglesby, Jr., and Deacon Dudley Lippitt. And now I invite your own prayers and intercessions. The General Thanksgiving can be found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you, the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.